Distorted View Daily proudly presents an African American man on C SPAN with the answer to all of our problems. Now, how do I know that the white people know that we are going to come up with a solution to the problem? I know it because they have retina scans, they have what they call racial profiling, DNA banks, and they're monitoring our people to try to prevent the one person from coming up with the one idea. And the one idea is how we are going to exterminate white people because that, in my estimation, is the only conclusion I have come to. We have to exterminate white people off of the face of the planet to solve this problem. Now, I don't care whether you clap or not, but I'm saying to you that we need to solve this problem because they are going to kill us. And I will leave on that. So we have to just set up our own system and stop playing and get very serious and not be diverted from coming up with a solution to the problem. And the problem on the planet is white people. Uh, be hard to follow that one. Freaks, it's Friday, April 5th, 2019. Coming up on the program today, the history of sexy, low-budget, softcore crime dramas, plus satanic meat screaming, masturbation is super gay, and tweaking your twat on the tube. All this with your voicemails today on DV. My grandfather eating my ass. Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Wolf Kabob Ruff Venice? Get Frantic Boots 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 And I want you to look in the mirror and realize you're a piece of crap. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. Yes! Back here one more time as we end the week with the Friday show. Got a great one for you today. You know, I fancy myself a student of television. I know a lot about uh, the history of the medium. And how the industry works. I was reading uh, about how CBS tried this experiment in the early 90s. They called it crime time after prime time. Now, typically on your, you know, big television networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, prime time starts at like 8 o'clock. That's when the, the new shows air, right? From 8 to like 10 or 11. And then the local news will come on. And then, you know, late night television talk shows. Very rarely do the networks play new television shows like dramas or sitcoms or something after the news at night. Well, CBS Crime Time After Prime Time tried to change all of that and failed miserably. It actually lasted longer than I, than I thought. It started in 1991 and by the summer of 1993, it was done with. Also, there was a large chunk in there where it didn't air because of the Gulf War. So CBS, you know, dedicated that time to, you know, running news stuff about the, the, the war in the Gulf. So anyway, what type of shows aired on Crime Time After Prime Time? Sleazy, sexy, sultry crime dramas. Mostly crime investigation shows with names like Sweating Bullets. Tropical Heat, Urban Angel. <laughs> we sound like pornos or porn studios. Urban Angel Studios presents Dangerous Curves. Oh, that was another TV show that aired. Yeah, there are new programs every day of the week. Late Monday night into t- uh, Tuesday morning. That's when Sweating Bullets or Tropical Heat aired and Urban Angel. Uh, the the most well known was probably. Uh, the program that aired late Thursday night into Friday morning, Silk Stockings. Even after the crime time after prime time block experiment failed, Silk Stockings was such a hit that it continued to air. I guess the USA Network bought it, and it ran until 1999. Uh, Lord Douche was talking about Silk Stockings, and that's what got me to research this, I did not watch the program growing up on uh, CBS or USA. I've got the theme song here, and I use the term theme song loosely. To me, this sounds like 25% Law and Order SVU and 75% woman's hair getting caught in a car door. See if you agree with me here. This is the beginning to Silk Stockings. This 
this is the, the SVU part. It reminds me of Law and Order. Da na 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 na. And then it's just pretty much her. There's like shots of women's legs and like naked guy chests. People running with briefcases, but like sexy people running with briefcases and fast cars and like women standing next to fast cars with their legs up. Women putting silk stockings on, uh, a drink being drugged, someone being drowned in a pool. A gunshot, more people being drowned in pools. Is there a department in the police force that handles just pool drownings? That must be the division uh, featured on this show. More of this. Here's the thing. So, you know, these television shows aired originally on, you know, CBS super late at night. They were never going to get the viewership of, you know, like Friends or Seinfeld or ER or something. So these were low budget affairs. So they really had to amp up the sex, right? That's how they sold these things. According to uh, the Wikipedia description of what Silk Stockings was all about, the series portrays the daily lives of two detectives who solve sex-based crimes of passion. Like that, I don't think you can just, you get that. That's not a job in real life. You're either, you know, you're, you're a detective that works in homicide, but you don't get to just pick the sexy cases. Detective Lorenzo, we found a body on Sunset Boulevard. We need you down there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you think her death is the result of an orgy gone wrong? Because if not, I'm not getting up out of my chair. We don't know why or how she died. That's why we need you. You're the detective. Was she at least found naked? Ass up? Jine out? No. How hot was she? I don't know. She's a 45-year-old. Pass. You're fired. That's how short the series would be if this was based on real life. I guess Law & Order kind of does something similar with SVU, if you consider raping, you know, 13-year-old underage girls to be, you know, sexy cases. But you know, you know what I mean. Sex crimes. They deal with sex crimes, but it's in a more believable way. Except for the part where Ice-T is a cop. That is the type of shit that belongs on Silk Stockings. You know, just as Silk Stockings was ending, that's when SVU got started. It would have been so great to see a crossover episode. The characters from Law & Order are all serious. We found the victim with a broken nose. Trace amounts of semen were located in the nostril. Ooh, hot! (laughs) That's one of the characters from Silk Stockings making their entrance. Detective, she's unconscious. Yeah, but come up the nostril. Seems like this is the type of girl who knows what she wants. Uh, Moving on, I gotta say thanks to Torso for this next clip. Recently on the show, we were talking about danger music. That, as we learned, is a genre of music where either the person singing or the listener is put in danger. For instance, an example of danger music would be a guy dropping a plugged-in toaster into the bathtub he's sitting in. That would be danger music. Another example I think we played is a guy who was like uh, nicking himself as he was shaving his body. Or it could be just, you know, someone screaming at you, you know, really loud. And, you know, the listener is in danger of going deaf. I think that's considered danger music. And that's kind of what I have for you today, thanks to Torso. This is Wild Women with Steak Knives. And then in parentheses, the homicidal love song for Solo Scream. If you listen closely, she does speak English. It's not just screams. Well, not here, of course. 
This track is titled Creaky Door. <laughs> let, let me fast forward to the part where I think uh, she's speaking English. <laughs> She's like the female equivalent of that uh, old guy we used to feature on the show where he was like, uh, put mine, big pussy. I ain't talking about meatballs. I'm talking about steak. This goes on for 12 minutes. I toyed with the idea of making this a, a test of patience today. I spared you. Isn't that the uh, Xena cry? Warrior princess? Oh, no. Okay, well, okay, if for some sick reason you want to hear the whole thing, you can just search for this on YouTube, Homicidal Love Song Solo Scream. Moving on, we have uh, two more short clips, and then we will get into the news. Uh, this next one here, a man is being detained by police because the guy said he's a federal marshal, but guess what? <laughs> it appears that he's not. Oh. And, of course, this went down in our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Our most fucked up state. So this all took place uh, at a Best Buy. A Florida man tried to get away with shoplifting an iPhone. Uh, he told police he was a U.S. Marshal. He even showed cops a, uh, a badge. So let's take a listen here. Is he a law enforcement officer? How'd you get here? Do you have any weapons on you, sir? Yes. Okay, where, where is it at? On my hip. Okay, so we thought. Are you a police officer? I'm not, no. Okay, all right. What are you? A federal marshal. Okay, all, all right, that's what we had to have an idea. No. Now, keep in mind, like, these are very straightforward questions. Are you a police officer? The guy says he's a federal marshal. He has a gun on him, okay? Okay. Just, just... We don't want you reaching for anything. I'm not reaching for anything. If you're a federal marshal, you understand what we're doing, I, right? Absolutely. Just, that, that, yeah, you can tell the police don't believe him already. If you are a federal marshal, you'll know this. <laughs> that, that, you have your federal marshal ID? No. So no, you're carrying a weapon with no ID on you? No. Because I just stepped out of my house to get okay. this character. Do you have a number we can call for your supervisor? No. no. Okay. I got to no, take this for you just for right, safety. You don't have an ID. You don't have a supervisor. For what? Until we figure out what's going on. You have a weapon. You have no ID on you. It's not a real weapon. You're carrying a fake weapon. Yeah. You know how federal marshals tend to carry squirt guns with them? It's play pretend day. And you're a federal marshal. No. He's got a little battery. Oh, now now this is, the story's changing completely. It's not a real gun, and he's not a federal marshal. Sir, if you think this is going to help your case at all, it's not. You're now in more trouble. No. Congratulations. You just impersonated a police officer. That's a federal offense. I, I never said I was a police officer. That he was a oh, yeah. Officer. Congratulations. That's a felony. Oh, look, a fake badge. Look, I just... Good eye, Alex. Why? Why would you do this? I guess just because he wanted respect, maybe? What's the story? Why are you carrying around a fake gun? I'm a limousine driver. Limousine driver, federal marshal, same thing. I you were a federal marshal. Hey, here, you got a badge that says U.S. Marshal. You're claiming to be U.S. Marshal. You have a badge, which, what does that say on it? Marshal. So why are we carrying That's my name. My name is Marshal. Okay, so but you know it's illegal. No, I didn't know it was illegal. <laughs> yes, you are displaying yourself as a law enforcement officer. <laughs> we just asked you. Are <laughs> no, you a I ain't. You said, yes, no. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I don't, you know, that is, that's illegal. That's a felony. Oh, absolutely not. And we don't play around with this. Hey, if you arrest me, you gotta arrest Woody from Toy Story 2. He's got a gun holster. He's got a badge. He's a little three-inch toy. He does have a point there. All right, real quick, before we get into the news, one more short clip. This is a, a dispute between an employee and his boss. Apparently, this guy's check came up a little short, and uh, he's confronting his boss. Now... Normal people would just be like, uh, hey, I worked last Thursday and uh, I'm seeing here that uh, you, you didn't pay me for it. So could you either reissue me a check or next pay period pay me for the time that I worked that you didn't pay me for? It's uh, not 
how this employee handles the situation. Time going on. When you didn't work last Thursday. When do time go in? Time going on Wednesday. And I did work last Thursday. I worked all week last week. Why the fuck you don't write our hours down? You see how you playing with my money talking about you didn't work last Thursday? Kobe, did I not work all week last week? I work every fucking day. Yeah, the boss kind of fucked up there. Why don't they have a system in place to keep track of the time? I have a hard time believing that that is the case. There's no way to keep track of, like, when your employees work? That's a bad way to do business. Now, why the fuck is you playing with me, bro? You think, bro, like, come outside, bro, because that's how I'm feeling right now. Maybe the let's take it out of side approach is uh, a little premature here. That can't be a good way to uh, keep your job. Because you think this shit a game, bro. If you want a knuckle, we can go in the fucking rain. Knuckle. Bro, my check is 27, bro, and I worked all week last week. Explain me why my money is fucking short. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. How? What time did you get the fuck Stop away? fucking ass. I'm not fucking. Fuck. I'm bro, serious. So what's up, bro? You want a buck? Yeah, the boss stood up from his chair, and this guy immediately thinks, like, he really wants to make this physical, this employee. How did you get the fuck Stop away? Stop fucking ass. I'm not fucking. I'm bro, serious. So what's up, bro? You want a buck? What you want to buck? For Do you want to buck? Because we can fucking buck. What's poppin'? We can buck, nigga. You playing with my fucking money. Get out of my face. Ain't no fucking get out of your face. Stop playing with my bread, bro. Get out of my face. And then what? Get out of my and face. And what? People really talk like this? Do you want a knuckle? Where's my bread? Get out of my face. And what? Get out of I'm my I'm entitled face. to my dime. What you gonna do about my bread? Whatever. Huh? Explain my money. What you gonna do about my money? What time did you get to work on my What Every the fuck? What time did you start work? Bro. Cause I really... I'm being dead serious. What time did you start work? How do you calculate how much money I'm making since you want to worry about what time I start work? What time you fucking start work? Bro, back up out my face. You spitting in my face, bro. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. He, it's interesting because he's like, back up. And then he walks towards him. Like, back up. Get out of my face. You just spit on me. And then he gets even closer. The time you get to work, the time you're done. And the amount of work I mean, you I get, get it. Up. How do you know the what time I get off and come to work? How? I know what time he has here. Cause I'm still here when he You gets know what time here. he get here. How do you know what time I start working? Cause I know it takes him to Answer my out. fucking question. How do you know what time I start working? Ultimately, this is the boss's fault. There needs to be a way to prove when the employees start. We wouldn't have this issue. Right, let me fast forward. At one point, the, the boss actually sees the other person filming this. I guess there's like a third person in the room. Hey. Oh. I know how the fuck you gonna calculate my money then? How you gonna calculate my money and you don't know what fucking time I get out of work? Easy. I'm here after he gets back. Turn your fucking phone off! Man, you better handle what you're yeah. in front of you. Your business, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, handle one problem at a time. Like this. You, my you don't want to get double teamed by these guys. Bread, bro. You really play on my money, bro. You really gonna make me see about you, bro. If my motherfucking check ain't reimbursed next week, we have a problem. I know you can't fix it now, so I ain't gonna get on your fucking ass. But you playing with my bread, bro. He's not gonna get on your ass. What's been happening for the past three minutes? But I do like that he's like, look, I understand you can't fix this this second. Just make sure, you know, I get paid in, the, in my next pay period. You think it's the game? You think I won't go on your shit? You really think I won't go on your shit? I don't give a fuck about this job. Well... Because literally you've been playing with me for the last fucking three that's weeks. That's something you probably shouldn't tell your boss. I don't think you're going to have a long career with the company. All right, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist to the fuck that news right now. If you like Distorted View Daily, help ensure that this show continues on for a long time. I can only do it with your support, and the best way to support the show is to sign up for the Sideshow. You're not just helping me and the program out, though. You are getting so much content for so little money. $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. When you sign up, you get access to the entire archive of podcasts, well over 3,000 shows. Plus, every week we do exclusive shows just for paying members. Occasionally, I'll do videos, mini programs. I think it was last week that we did a brand new DV log, the first of 2019. It's chock full of disturbing visual stuff. Check it out if you're not yet a member. Superfreaksideshow.com. All right, three very quick stories. Then we'll get the hell out of here. First up, th I think uh, Haley's Comet sent this to me. It's not quite news, but we do talk about Coach Dave quite a bit. And uh, Pathios did an article uh, on him. Christian Wright 
Activist Dave Dobbenmeyer said on his Past the Salt live webcast that masturbation was wrong in part because it's pretty much homosexuality. <laughs> this is a lot like that clip I played recently of the guy who said, uh, look, I will not fuck my girlfriend up the butt because that's a slippery, shitty slope to gay stuff. That seems almost sane compared to what Coach Dave is saying. I mean, think about this. You know, like 90% of the people who consider themselves Christian and who watch Coach Dave, they're masturbating. They're masturbators. Everyone masturbates. This is not an argument where you're going to get a lot of people on your side. Also, you're a liar. I've got audio here of Coach Dave talking about this. Masturbation is homosexuality you're having sex with a man you are all gay sorry to break that news to you but now that you know call me let's have some real fun think about it if you are gay in god's eye just for using your own hand why not let a guy blow you get some real pleasure out of this right the damage is done go hog wild <laughs> It'd be funny if Coach Dave's warning here about masturbation actually turned men gay. I know some of you guys are shocked, disappointed, freaked out upon learning the news that you have been gay for a very long time, since probably like the age of 12 or something. This is why you should um, use scented lotions from Bath & Body Works before you start masturbating, right? Then paint your nails... Really try to make your hand look as feminine as possible. Shave your knuckles. At least l make it look like you're having sex with a woman. God. Of course, Dave would probably say you're having sex with a tranny then. So, I mean, there's it's just no, it's a no-win situation. You get it? No. Now you're putting images of a woman in your, in your mind. Yeah, guys are thinking about women when jacking off. So that, that's got to count for something. But you're having sex with a man. It's how, it's how, uh, it's how the, that's where the devil will take us if we give him free reign in our that's minds. Right. You give the devil an inch and he will stroke that inch to completion. The devil's a faggot. I like this idea though, that the, the devil sort of like sneaks in and he turns all masturbators gay. Well, how do you explain then that most people who masturbate are straight that's why I said in, the, in their life they have sex with the, you know they bang broads. In the commentary that I wrote yesterday, I don't know if I have time to read it. And I don't know if I should read it. No, you shouldn't. Sex is a behavior, guys. It's a behavior, an orgasm. No, sex is an act. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I have to say that, Lord? Don't say it. Okay. <laughs> this just sounds awful. I just gotta say it. Sometimes one of the greatest feelings that you could ever have is a bowel movement. Well, this is taking a weird turn. If Coach Dave comes out as a proponent of scat play, I'm out. I'm done you with the show. You guys ever had one of those moments where you thought you could never get home? If I could, man, I, I'm holding it, I'm holding it, I got to get home again, you run in the house. Why the hell did he use bowel movements as an example of something that feels as good as an orgasm? The go-to analogy is a sneeze, idiot. Got this Christian guy ta talking about taking shits and, the and how great it feels. I mean, he's not wrong. If that comes, well, is is that feeling any different than the relief that you get when you have an orgasm? Well, is taking a shit gay? I guess that's the real question. Both of them are temporary releases and feelings of pleasure. One is associated with sex, and one isn't. They are bodily functions. Oh man. The uh, Pathios website, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, uh, goes on to say it's tempting to write off Dobbenmeyer as some fringe Christian with wacky views, which he is, but he's not alone in this claim. Pastor Mark Driscoll said the same thing several years ago in an ebook he wrote. Okay. Well, lots of crazy people say lots of crazy things. It's a self published book, for Christ's sakes. You know how many people read that book? Four. Four people did. All right, Pastor Mark Driscoll said the same thing several years ago in an ebook he wrote to warn people against watching X-rated content online. Meanwhile, Pornhub re uh, reports record numbers. 
No one's taking this guy's advice. All right, so there you go. Second story we have for you today. A woman masturbated on the train for 10 minutes and blamed her itchy thigh. These are news stories you, you, you know, you're not going to hear on CNN or Fox News or whatever. Sarah Hankson, 37, draped herself across four seats on the Hammersmith and City Line while touching herself and moaning loudly in February. Yeah, that last part was her mistake, right? If you're going to masturbate on a train, you got to, you, you know, you got to be quiet about it. Hinkson's hand was allegedly still down her trousers when she was arrested by police officers at King's Cross Station over there in the UK. Passenger Anthony Burton, who is visually impaired in one eye, you know she wasn't hiding what she was doing at all. <laughs> I think that's the implication here. Like, look, this guy could only see out of one eye, and he was able to tell that she was finger blasting herself. Uh, He told the City of London Magistrates Court that he boarded at Paddington after being escorted into the front carriage with his guide dog. He said, I was suddenly aware of a banging noise. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) She's got a tin pussy. Clank, clank, clank. Ah, yeah. Clank, clank, clank. Robot fingering her little metal clitty there. All right. Uh, He said, I was suddenly aware of a banging noise, and I thought it was something mechanical. But I noticed that to my right, there was a lady who was laying across three or four seats. She was banging her foot against the seat or the glass, which was making the noise. Oh, okay. Uh, There was not anybody standing in the way. I could see her quite clearly. Mr. Burton denied his impaired vision had affected what he had seen. He continued... All I could see of her hand was the top of her wrist area because the rest of her hand was in her pants. It was around her crotch. It was blatantly obvious. Oh, there she is. Okay, shut up. It was around her crotch. It was blatantly obvious which part of her body it was. Her hands were moving back and forth in a sort of uh, gyratory movement. She wasn't saying anything, but there were moans and groans of a sexual nature. I was quite taken aback. Mr. Burton contacted the police after seeing that there were children nearby at risk of seeing the uh, scene there. Uh, Hinkson later told officers, rash on my inner thigh. That's what it is. I was scratching a rash on my inner thigh. It comes and goes. That reads like a bad lie. You know, like, a rash on my thigh. Yeah, I was scratching a rash on my inner thigh. It comes and goes. Hinkson from West London denied outraging public decency by behaving in an indecent manner, but she was convicted anyway. And she's still going at it. Okay, that's enough. Uh, Chair Magistrate Diane Lennon. Oh, okay. She... Diane Lennon found Hinkson guilty, stating, We were asked to consider an offense of outraging public decency. Mr. Burton clearly saw indecent acts taking place over a material period of time. There we go. We found the crown has... We found the crown has proven this incident occurred beyond all reasonable doubt. Okay. It's hard to read with you carrying on like, like that. Let's just move on. Final story we have for you today. This one comes from California. Police in Northern California were shocked to discover the fate of a runaway pet pig. Oh, no. After they asked a neighbor to watch her while they tracked down the owner. It's a very strange, strange case, Lieutenant Todd Dockweiler said. Uh, He's with the Arcata Police Department. Uh, He said it's uh, really a strange occurrence. Princess, a nearly 400-pound pig went missing from her Humboldt County home on March 23rd. She was later spotted in a neighbor's yard. After the wandering pig was found, the police department arrived on the scene to help Princess home. Now keep in mind, this is in Northern California, and and calls like this aren't that unusual. You know, like missing livestock, you know, livestock running away. So uh, residents typically have a few acres of land who own livestock. Police asked a nearby neighbor if he could keep Princess in his gated yard, while they locate her owner. That is also a uh, normal practice uh, in the area. The neighbor agreed, and the police quickly found the owner, but <laughs> this is where it becomes a distorted view news story. When police returned to pick up Princess, they were horrified to find that she was in the process of being butchered for meat. And they were doing it right in the driveway, 
we were totally shocked and surprised to learn that the pig had been slaughtered. That's according to the police chief, Brian Ahern. Uh, Doc Weiler said that the homeowner who agreed to watch Princess wasn't the man responsible for killing her, though. It was just a misunderstanding, maybe. Another man who was at the homeowner's residence at the time took it upon himself to kill the pet. The homeowner didn't know that this was happening. The man then moved Princess to the driveway to butcher her. Doc Weiler says the entire incident occurred in the span of about two hours. That's a pretty quick butchering. Given the stage of the butchering process he was in, he must have slaughtered the pig shortly after the officer left. Carrie Hogan, Princess's owner, former owner, now a grieving pork widow. Uh, Carrie Hogan, Princess's owner, reportedly did not witness the gruesome scene, but was devastated by the news of what happened to her beloved pig. Was she at least given Princess's remains sizzling bacon strips? Pork chops. All right. Hogan said that uh, she had Princess, who turned one in January since she was a little piglet and occasionally bottle fed her aw in her living room. Hogan's daughter even showed Princess at a state fair. She's very sweet. She's not aggressive. She likes to be around people. What happened with the guy who butchered poor Princess? I hope detectives are on this case. Another sexy, salty, meaty Pig murder case on swine stockings. Ah! Actually, Doc Weiler said that police uh, are investigating this case, uh, but the man who slaughtered Princess is being charged with a felony for grand theft. As for Hogan, she seems to want nothing more than justice for the killing of a cherished member of her family. I think the hardest part of this is knowing that there's somebody out there that's this kind of savage. So there you go. Happy news story to end the week. That, my friends, is your Distorted News for Friday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Love to hear from you, freaks. There are many ways to contact the show. You can always email me, show at distortedview.com. Send along a message or a link to something funny you think I should feature on the show. You can also find me all over social media, at Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash Distorted View Show, and, of course, youtube.com slash Distorted View Show. And, of course, we've got that Discord where over a 1,000 freaks hang out. Check it out. There's a link on the main navigation bar over there at distortedview.com. Yes, caller. Go right ahead. That sounds great. Go oh, ahead. Hi, Timmy Boy. Yeah, hi. hi, this is uh, Unicorn Hamster checking in. Hey, um, so I was at the bar Saturday. I was a little depressed. It's another reason I didn't call in a while. Uh, I went to the bar and I met this girl and she's uh, very beautiful and um, uh, we ended up having some drinks and went back to her place and well I don't want to stress the rest long story short Get to the good I part. left my number in a napkin in her kitchen table as we had really because it sounds like you may have murdered her not to drink that night so is that your normal she voice texted me right away oh really she texted you so she wanted some more morning and we went out on a date wednesday oh, good now for you. this is a little advice i need from the freaks uh now how do i introduce this lady she's hot um so i'm gonna keep Seeing her, uh, we already made plans for tomorrow. Um, how do I let her in? Introduce her to distorted view. Do I like ease it in slowly, like you know, pen anal penetration, or do I just uh, have an episode playing while we're driving to the movies or something? I think that's a good way to go. Uh, have an episode playing. Say, oh, this is a podcast I listen to, but you got to be very careful. You got to put a lot of thought into what episode you're going to play. No scat porn, no blatantly racist stuff. <laughs> you got to find one where I'm not being too offensive, right? You got to ease ease into DV. Anyway, on another find an episode where I'm extra charming. Topic: uh, the nigger card. Can a white no. man say nigger? No. Well, this is what I heard. I know this kid from Tennessee. He's a uh, you know, a white guy, and he, he's like down with the nigga. Hey, nigga. 
And, you know, he's, like, from the hood and everything. And, like, he well, says, like, he got the mega card because he lost his virginity to a big black chick. Oh, that's the rule now? If, if the first person you have sex with is black, then you're allowed to use the N-word? black chick with big old titties and Hershey's Never heard that one before. Kisses, nipples. Okay, so that that's that's it. And uh, yeah, I don't think that's how the N word card works. Fuck all of you and have a great day. If you have any advice for this guy, uh, what's his name, Unicorn Hamster, uh, about how he should ease this lady into DV, call into the voicemail line. Yes, caller. So one of the last things. She, oh no! The argument she ever said we're bitching about uh, her lists, right? I have a. Two men on my list that I absolutely hate, my dad and you. It's like one of the last arguments I said something along the lines of, well, so am I ever going to see you again? Well, why would you want to see me again? You know, I'm as bad as your fucking father. I think he's talking about the last argument he ever had with his wife. You know, and, uh, I, you know, I hope she doesn't forget it because I fucking never will. And I, that's it. And I'm done fucking talking about her. All right. Well, uh... Thank you. I don't know. Did we want to know about this? He's he's acting as if we're prying into his life, and I think he just called into the voicemail line drunk, probably. True. <laughs> Sideshow member TJ from Chicago. Hey, TJ. Um, I'm calling back to do another uh, Distorted View trivia question. Ooh, these are fun. Okay. Um, but this I'm one, down. I will readily admit, is kind of unfairly difficult, and I don't expect you to get it right. I am okay. just more curious to hear what you think the answer is going okay. to be. <laughs> You're um, looking forward to me being wrong. That all being said, the question is, what was the very first porn clip that you ever oh, played Jesus. on the Distorted View podcast? <sighs> I know it wasn't the gay fisting porn. I know it wasn't Scott Taylor. I am going to say... It was the man who had giant... I See, I don't think this is right either. It's either just like a woman who's screaming like orga... Oh, or it could be chicken nuggets. Oh, there's so many early porn clips. So there was that one where like the two women are having sex, right? One has a strap on and making the other girl suck it. And then the girl who's sucking throws up all over the dildo and the woman... And she found out that you know she could pick out that the, the food that was in the vomit. <laughs> there was chicken nuggets, and she goes, "Ah, chicken nuggets." Uh, so there's that one that was a very early porn clip. Then there was that one, the one that I was going to mention was like, it's a guy who's masturbating, and he has gigantic balls. I don't know if they're filled with saline or whatever, and his balls are so big and droopy that as he's masturbating, he's slapping his ass with his balls. And uh, that could be it. I don't know. Is it any of those? I don't think so. Let's see. What do you got for me? Tom? Okay. The answer is, um, this was back, you know, must have been in you know late 2004, early 2005. Yeah. Uh, you never gave the name of this particular porn film, oh. but it was a clip where these two guys in like an auto repair shop were talking and hmm. you know one of them was talking about lube jobs and i just remember this line very vividly oh, lube like, jobs. how are you with a lube job yeah. and the other guy's like lube job and then he starts comparing like how doing a good lube job to a car yeah. is a lot like you know getting head or something and in the end they fuck lube um, yeah i remember the way he says that. later in like a Sextastic Tuesday intro, I think, and yeah. it's always been like this. You know, it's such a stupid clip, and I've always hmm. wondered, you know, the the movie where it came from. I don't expect you to know, but if if yeah, you for... have any information, like regarding, no. you know, where that clip came from, I'd love to. As a matter of fact, I'm kind it. of annoyed because that used to be a sound clip that I would play a lot, lube job, but I can't find it anymore. But, I must have lost it uh, during, you know, like a hard drive crash or something. Yeah, that's a. That was the Very first good. clip that you ever played, the blast from Distorted View Past. Hmm. If you still have it in your audio God, archive, I'd did. love to hear it again on the show Ninja. sometime. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'll call in with another one of these uh, probably sometime soon. Great. Well, that was awesome. Yeah, I was wrong, of course, but I definitely do remember the lube job gay porn clip. So thank you very much for that. 
All right. That is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voice email line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206-660-GOD. Is it okay? I'm not talking about meatballs. I am talking about steak. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Don't forget to rate us and review us on iTunes. Guys, thank you so much for a great week of programs. I will be back on Monday to do it all over again. Until then, bye, everybody. That's it.